and the, after you remove the solvent, you still have to remove the binder. Solvents are the small molecule stuff, water, acetone, acetone. Those are can just uh, at room temperature or slightly higher they would go. But binder are large molecule polymers. And to remove those quite often, you have to use special technique. For example, by so-called capillary flow, you heat the green body up to a certain temperature and at that temperature above, let's say your polymers melting temperature and then the polymer may be sucked away into some other region, capillary flow. Green body placed in powder bite, quite often at elevated temperature, then the binder in the green body can flow to some other region. Okay, solvent extraction, you are using a solvent that can dissolve the binder away to remove the soluble compo component of the binder. But more common is just thermal debonding, just uh, applying heat quite often in air because it's the cheapest. It's way more expensive to do heat treatment in nitrogen, not to mention hydrogen. Okay, so most people are doing in air, applying heat, since you are sintering anyway. The first stage at a lower temperature, softening of the binder. You are talking about the, a plastics, a polymer. When you heat up to this temperature quite often, uh, Tg, or slightly above Tg, the polymer becomes soft. Okay. And uh, beyond that, the larger polymer chain would uh, break into smaller molecules. And if the oxygen, they may be oxidized into water or carbon dioxide. At temperature 200 to 400, something like that. I could be a little bit higher. And at uh, higher than 400, some of the hard to remove polymers which like with ring structure that may give residual carbon instead of burning cleanly to small molecule those you got to remove at higher temperature but most of the like uh, cellular space they are removed uh, about 400 each they are removed pretty cleanly okay but some other like uh, if you your system contains benzene ring or some other stuff then you have to go to higher temperature because those would give you instead of Small molecule, they give you charcoal, the blackish stuff, which are difficult to remove, and those you need higher temperature to burn them away. Okay, combined method, which is combining these three, but most cases people are only using thermal debonding, cheapest one. And practical thermal debonding, not very critical if your polymer bundle content is less than 5% by volume not too much okay which means you don't have to worry too much about the polymers exploding during the debonding process you can heat up your polymer green body relatively fast on the other hand if you uh, green body has a lot of polymer such as for tape casting your tape green tape that has flexibility you can fold it back and forth they quite often have a lot of polymer and then you have to be very, very careful or you have extruded body with high binder content, okay? Again, it's always a balance. You want to do it carefully, slowly to avoid defects. Don't want to create explosion within your green body, making big holes. At the same time, you don't want it to take forever. Make sense? You want it to be done cheaply in a timely fashion. So it's always a tricky balance that you are doing this. Okay? And generally, debanding at, slow, at a slightly lower temperature in oxidizing atmosphere than in inert atmosphere. Sometimes people find, okay, if you have to use inert atmosphere, quite often the debonding temperature is slightly higher. If it's in oxidizing, which is in air, quite often 400 to 500 you are done. 
But if you are doing that, if your system is sensitive to air, quite often your debunding temperature has to go all the way up to around 700. That's what we said. Okay. 